In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to multi-dimensional arrays. We're going to start by looking at a two-dimensional array, and then we'll, we'll go into three and higher dimensional arrays in later lessons. So first of all, what do I mean when I say a multi-dimensional array? Let's go ahead and look at the kind of array that we've already seen. So this is a one-dimensional array because it is an array of individual data elements, in this case characters. So we can think of a one-dimensional array for the sake of this lesson as being a word, a simple string of text. A two-dimensional array is simply an array of one-dimensional arrays. Now if we think of a one-dimensional array as being a word, then we can say that a two-dimensional array is simply an array of words. How would that look in memory? L let's first of all create three different words. Here we've simply created three different variables called word1, word2, and word3. This is not a two-dimensional array. It's just simply three individual one-dimensional arrays, three individual strings of text. If we were to imagine that these three strings of text were stored in memory one after the other, it would look like this. Word one would be the word one followed by the null termination character. Word two would be the word two followed by the null termination character. And word three would be the word three followed by the null termination character. For the sake of this lesson, in order to explain to you how two-dimensional arrays work, I need to be able to store these strings of text one after the other in memory. How can I do that? The answer is I can just simply create a new array of, of characters, and I'll call it an array of words, and I'll set it equal to one, null termination character, two, null termination character, three. Keep in mind that any time you have a string of text enclosed in double quotes, there's always going to be a null termination character at the end. So that's it. I've done that now. So by creating this line of code, I am storing each string of text one immediately after the other in memory. In effect, I'm creating a kind of two-dimensional array. So let's go ahead and delete this code now. What happens if I try to print this string of text if I send it to the printf function. It's going to print just the word one. Why? Because when it starts printing it's going to look at the O, then the N, then the E, and then it's going to reach the null termination character which means to stop printing and it's not going to go beyond that. So it's very easy to print the first word of my one-dimensional array. Now we've worked with pointers before. Let's go ahead and create a pointer. And we'll set that pointer to the memory address of the first element of our array of words. So in this case we're pointing to the capital O in the word one. So if we try to send the pointer to the printf function and we run the program, we get exactly the same result. We're still printing the first word. How can we print the second word? The answer is we just simply have to move the pointer. Right now the pointer is pointing to offset 0, which is the start of the array and the start of the word 1. If we want to print the word 2, then we need to move the pointer by adding to the offset. So offset 0 is the O in 1. Offset 1 is the N in 1. Offset 2 is the E in 1. Offset 3 is the null termination character, which ends the first word. And offset 4 is the capital T, which is the first character of the word 2. So if we tell the printf function to use my pointer, offset 4, we're adding 4 to the memory address, then it's going to start printing here and then it's going to stop when it reaches the null termination character. If we run the program, you'll see that it prints the word 2. What I want you to understand here is that 
when you have a two-dimensional array, what you really have is a one-dimensional array where each element, in this case each word, is simply stored one after the other in memory. The way that you can get to each individual array element is by using an offset. So if we wanted to print the final word, then we would change our offset. So this is offset 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if we set it to offset 8 and we run the program, we'll print the final word. Now what if we wanted to print a specific character? Like let's say I wanted to print the R in 3. So first of all we need to change our printf function. Instead of saying that we want to print a string, we're going to print a single character, which means instead of the printf function expecting a memory address, it's going to expect what is at that memory address. So by just simply placing an asterisk in front of this, I'm no longer saying the memory address my pointer plus a, but I'm saying the specific character that is located at that memory address. Same character, so it's still going to print the, the capital T. Take a look like you see. And the reason is just simply because what is at the memory address my pointer plus 8 is the T. So if I wanted to print the R, I just need to add to that offset. Now there's two ways that I can do that. I could simply go 8, 9, 10, and I could say my pointer plus 10, which will work just fine, and that gets me to the specific element that I want, or I can use two offsets. I can use one offset the plus 8 to get me to the first element of the word 3 and then I can use another offset which is how many characters after that so I can say 8 plus 2 and I'll still get the exact same result. Now the reason I would do it that way is because it's easier to understand intuitively that I'm going to a specific word and then I'm saying that I want a specific character within that word. So it's a two-part process. First of all, I'm moving to the the word and then I'm adding to that to get to the specific character. Now what if I wanted to print the O in 2? Well remember the word 2 begins at offset 4 and the O would be element number 2 in the word 2. Remember this is element 0, this is 1, and this is 2. So now this will print the O in the word 2, like you see. Now hopefully here you understand why we start array elements at 0, because if we were looking at offset 0, we would say 4 plus 0, and that's the first character. That way when you are performing mathematical operations to move offsets around, you can always be looking at the first character by not adding anything to the offset. Now let's take a look at another example. Here we have the exact same string of text and I want to imagine that we want to use the printf function to print a specific character. Now if I were to write this then I'm sending specifically the character capital O from the word 1 to the printf function. And if I run this, I'm going to print the O in the word 1. I want you to see that writing this is the same thing as writing this. In both cases, we're getting the exact same character. We're just using a different syntax to do it. Here we're using the array indexing syntax where we're saying get array element 0 of the array called an array of words which is here and element 0 is of course the first element which is here. Here on the other hand we're saying locate the memory address of that array and get what is at that memory address and since we have an offset of 0 it's just saying get what is at that memory address. So if we run the printf function like this we will get the exact same result as this. Take a look. And you should understand why. We're, we're saying the exact same thing. We're just using a different syntax to do it. 
Now if we're looking for a specific element of the array, like say we want the W in the word 2, then of course, like I showed you, we can just add to that offset. We know that if we add 0, we, we get the capital T. If we add 1, we get the W in 2. And so you can use this syntax and get the W in 2. And of course, this is the same thing as if we had written plus 5. What if we wanted to do that using the array syntax? Well, the answer is we just simply do this. Same thing. If we run this program, you'll see that it prints the W. What I want you to notice is the very clear relationship between pointers and arrays. You can write the exact same code using the array index syntax, using these brackets, as you can using a pointer and using the offset. It's just a different way of writing the exact same code. So anytime you see something like this, you should be able to now think of it as being this. In both cases, you're reaching the exact same element in memory. Now in the next lesson, we'll look at this in greater detail, but what I want to make sure that you understand from this lesson are the following points. First of all, a two-dimensional array is simply an array of one-dimensional arrays. You can use either the array bracket syntax or the pointer offset syntax in order to reach the same element in memory. And lastly, to reach a specific element, you can use multiple offsets, first to reach a specific starting element, and then an offset added to that in order to reach the specific element that you want. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.